My guest tonight has starred in numerous films, including Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and Elf, just to name three out of 7,000. His latest movie is really funny, Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga. And it's currently streaming on Netflix. Please welcome my enemy, Will Ferrell. How are you, Will? That there's no, no one's applauding. Will, there's no audience. No, Will, no. There's no, there's no, I'm just so used to doing that uh, for talk show appearances that it's hard to break that habit. Yeah. Do you miss the laughter in quarantine? Oh, my God. You know what? I've trained my children to act like a room full of sitcom writers that everything I say, they just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the weird thing is they're now saying things like, I wrote that, wrote that line. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, that, that's mine, that's mine. Uh-huh. I wanna say you, um, you look very handsome. I like your hair in quarantine. You look good, your hair's Thank getting, you. it's a nice, uh, very puffy, your hair. I didn't realize. Yeah, I can get, I can get a lot of volume very quickly if it's not maintained. Um, and, uh, I don't know. There's no reason to cut it. Yeah. Cut. No. These are strange times, to say the least. Do you have anyone in your family um, that you would trust with cutting your hair? Here's the thing. No. I would not trust anyone to cut my hair. But uh, I kind of like just letting it go. You yeah. know, the Conan Pompadour? Sure. Classic. 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 Thanks. Uh, it has collapsed under the weight of the length of the hair, and now I'm just letting it go. You're almost unrecognizable. Yeah. Do you without, like that? Without the pomp. Yeah. Can you hear a truck backing up in the background? Nope. Oh, then I probably shouldn't have called attention to it. It's incredibly loud here at the theater. We're shooting at the Largo Theater. I know you've appeared here many times. I am having a whole truckload of Omaha steaks though delivered to you and your crew. <laughs> Maybe so that's that, what, that may be the truck. Why did you have them delivered when you knew we'd be interviewed? That seems awkward. You know what? I didn't remember exactly. I just said, you know, they have those windows. They said anytime from one to four. So <laughs> is that up to me? No. No. I uh are, are you doing okay? Uh, like is that your office right there? That looks like the office that that a manager would have at a construction site. What's happening there? It really does look like. <laughs> well, I, it's funny you should say that. I am in one of those mini trailers that you'd see on a construction site. Uh huh. That's what uh, it looks like. Yeah. With no windows and just mm -hmm. a weird door and bad uh, wood paneling. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. This is a little a little uh, little offshoot. Yeah. A little office here. Yeah. Would you tell me? Would you be honest with me, if? during this period of time, you were working at a construction. Oh, what's that? Oh, Network, that's a great movie. I still gotta watch Network, so that's on my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you have, you had, a, you had a small trailer built on your property so you could watch the movie Network? <laughs> Network, and uh, what else we got here? Oh, a, a bootleg of a face in the crowd. Okay, listen to me, listen to me. There's something, Will. I got a lot of bootlegs. <laughs> There's something called streaming. You could stream all of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> I like the old fashioned DVD. Okay, well, I think that's a good use of your time to be in a small shack watching what? old movies in an outmoded format. And I congratulate you. Uh, I also want to congratulate you on the movie Eurovision Song Contest, uh, the uh, story of Fire Saga. I watched this last night. Another enjoyable romp. I, I have to tell you, I really enjoyed it, but I didn't know anything about Eurovision. Yeah. The Eurovision Song Contest is a real thing that you've been obsessed with for a while. Is that right? Yes, it is a, uh, it's been going on for 60 plus years uh, and Every year it's watched from anywhere to 180 to 200 million people. 
<laughs> it is one of the craziest things you'll ever see. I, I discovered it literally 20 years ago with my wife. We were visiting her uh, family in Sweden and uh, we, we, we had had dinner and all of a sudden her cousin was like, uh, so shall we uh, watch Eurovision? And uh, I was like, okay, yeah, what's that? And, and sat there for three hours mesmerized by i had no idea what was going on uh so but it is it is like cirque du soleil meets american idol meets i don't know a a, a residency show in vegas it's it's uh it's the craziest thing you've ever seen also meets the olympics because it's yeah. different countries going up against each other and one of the things you capture in this movie is there is something about European entertainment and <laughs> that is uh, very specific. And so yeah. you, in the movie, you portray people singing uh, like rock power ballads dressed as Vikings. That's something that really could happen on Eurovision. A hundred percent. And it's, it's so foreign to us as Americans, you know, we, any sort of our competitive music shows, we're, 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 pretty much into looking as cool as we can. Uh, in Eurovision, it's quite the opposite, even though they fully believe they're looking as cool as possible. Uh, right. But yeah, you'll, you'll see everything from costumes, a lot of pyrotechnics, a lot of people uh, just on stage doing nothing that has anything to do with the song. Uh, <laughs> including one of the, I, I, I actually, been to three of them in person and, and one of the bits that we actually lifted and put in the movie was um, I think I believe it was the Ukraine and this this singer was <laughs> was singing but behind them on the stage was a man just running in a life a human sized hamster wheel uh, <laughs> for three minutes and was never referenced in any way and uh, had nothing to do with the song <laughs> nothing to do with the song the singer didn't look back the, 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 they even got a tight shot of the guy running in the hamster wheel and he just kept running. He wouldn't even look at the camera. And we were obsessed with that image that we, we ended up putting it in the movie. You know what I love is that you're in the hamster wheel, yes. running full out, but Unlike uh, the example you just gave, you also have to sing while you're running full out in the hamster wheel, yeah. which looks hilarious and I imagine was next to impossible. Well, it is one of those moments where, and I found myself on numerous occasions over my career, when I read something on the page, I forget that I'm actually gonna have to do it. <laughs> and yeah. there I was on that day being hoisted about 50 feet above the ground <laughs> in, a, in a hamster wheel that I kind of had to control with my own gait and then singing the lyrics. Uh, uh, but, you know, we got it done. You got it done. Yeah. You got it done in style. I also... Uh, but the, but the, uh, the prop master did remind me on several occasions how difficult it was to build that hamster wheel. I was like, okay, but isn't that your job? Yeah, but I'm just telling you, there's 90 there's 96 weld joints alone on that piece of steel. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I think he was looking for a big thank you. Thank you. I, thank I you. said thank you. Yeah. I could have said thank you more. I should have sent him Omaha steaks. Um. Oh. You uh. You reveal that you have quite a nice singing voice, Will. And I, it leads me to wonder, what about you putting out an album, Will Ferrell Sings? Is that something that could happen? Uh, you know, it could, you never know. Uh, but I would probably be drawn to more of a spoken word album. I'd love to bring back spoken word. You mean just saying the lyrics? Saying the lyrics. Not actually singing the song? Nope. And not like eight or 10 songs, 30 to 50 songs, spoken word. That's gonna be a very, very long album. 
you're gonna you're gonna want to sit back and really really be able to dedicate a nice chunk of time to it. Yeah, I think you're gonna want to listen to it as you drive from LA to Boston. Sure. And, and you're gonna maybe just get through all the songs, maybe, as you get to Framingham, Mass. Exactly. In fact, I'm gonna, that's how I'm, I'm gonna do a dry run where I time it so that when you pull into Framingham, you finish the album. Okay. This sounds like a awful idea. Thank you, you've given me a great idea. No, don't what do you say? Don't do it. It's a bad idea. No. <laughs> Got it. No. You're there's a scene in the movie. You know, I no no, don't don't make your spoken word album. No, no salute. No. No one has ever saluted. Thank you, Conan. <laughs> Such a bad idea. There's a scene in the movie where you um you wear a leotard. And a lot of actors get very self-conscious about their bodies beforehand. Mm -hmm. I will hazard to guess you do not. Is that fair to say? Uh, not only do I not, uh, but that the sad part of, of the scene you're talking about is um, I, was, I was looking really skinny for me uh, that period of time. Uh huh. And uh, in fact, I had dropped about ten to fifteen pounds. Okay. Uh, but you know what? I, it just doesn't. It still doesn't work. Yeah. Well, this is you at a a low weight for you. That's me in pretty darn good shape. <laughs> <laughs> Did you walk around like check this out? Cause here, here's where we are now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> there's okay. Yeah. There's um. So. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Let's. Did you get a good shot of that, guys? Yeah. Guys in the booth. Yeah. Every. Yeah. There's no booth here. It's just a Zoom. Okay. But yes, we we saw all of that and. Um, it was fantastic. Have you put on a, 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 some weight during this period of time? I find it extremely hard to. Uh, yes. To not. I, I have put on uh, some weight. Yeah. I've kept the weight out of my face. No, you still look. Yeah. But. Good lines. Yeah. I have a way of getting fat out of my face, which I do at home. Oh. Using a rubber tube uh, and a suction device and uh, a sterilized razor blade. That keeps me looking it keeps it cheap wow. but i'm a bloated monster i would say from mid chest down yeah yep uh a, a bloated parody of a human being oh uh, yeah anyway yeah um you looked like you're about to cry so i was going to give you a moment what what are you going to do you know? you know what i really like i really like that uh, your father in this film is portrayed by pierce brosnan it takes some serious balls to cast the handsomest man in the world as your father. Right. A total dick move. <laughs> <laughs> it literally makes no sense. <laughs> and he, he's, yeah. very, he's very funny. He's very funny. He's so funny. And, uh, you know, he, he, he is like one of those people who's kind of a, you know, like a perfect human being, like an, you know, the ultimate dinner party guest, uh, so gracious and kind and humorous stories. And uh, there is a scene in the movie where he kind of gives me a, I've kind of given up my dream and I'm gonna just follow in his footsteps. He's a fisherman. Our family has been a long line mm -hmm. of fishermen and I've, I've, we're on the boat and he kind of gives me this speech to, to you know, go back and, and, and go back to the contest and, uh, and do what I was, you know, put on earth to do. Well, the day we happened to be filming, I, I don't, it was, it was just, we had to film on that day and there were five to six foot swells and we were literally shooting on this boat and people were getting sick and not hiding it. And, uh, and there's Pierce just, first of all, looking so dashing in a fisherman's outfit. I don't know how you do that. Number one. Right. Uh, number two, not seasick at all, just in between takes while crew people are throwing up violently on the side of the boat. And there he is just 
taking selfies and his aviator sunglasses just looking perfect. Yeah. Um, when we finally got to, 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 the, to the dock after he came off the boat and he was like, that was a day. <laughs> so I, I think that was a positive statement. Well, we have a clip here from uh, Eurovision Song Contest, the story of fire uh, saga. I don't yeah. know what the what you, what you I believe this is uh, this is uh, Rachel McAdams who plays mm -hmm. Secret, uh, 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 my bandmate. Uh, and this is this is before us getting ready to go on stage for the Icelandic singing contest. This is to the chance to represent Iceland. Right. In Eurovision. This is like the semi semi finals, just the to get. Semi semi finals, and this is our backstage prep. Okay, let's take a look at this clip from Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga. I'm so nervous, Lars. I wish I could sing in Icelandic. I know it would calm me. Secret. You know that a song in Icelandic would never win the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes, I know, I know. I'm being silly, but I'm just, I'm just anxious. Oh. Lars. Hmm. It's really hard. Dream come true. Huh? Yes. No, I know. Yeah. Uh. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, I just want my ding dong to look bigger than what is really there. Smart. Mm. Should I draw attention to my groin area as well? Now you get it, yeah. I could do a camel. Do a classic camel. Okay. It's never out of style. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Pretty good, huh? And we're back. Wasn't that pretty cool? Pretty cool, and I hope that was the right setup. Uh, if not, we can... Uh... <laughs> I think given, under the circumstances, I'm in an abandoned theater. You're clearly managing a construction site. Um, I think we're doing pretty well, all things considered. I gotta have a crane by Tuesday. <laughs> I, we've already talked about this. <laughs> Sorry, Conan. These it's guys. It's a good thing you're there. Yeah, it's a really good thing you're there. And I did want to thank you. You're doing something uh, very cool, which is I've seen some paparazzi shots of you. I saw one where you're wearing a, a t-shirt, and the message on the t-shirt says, "Thank you, frontline workers." You're using your celebrity uh, to, and the fact that there are paparazzi to get out this great message, which I thought was a very clever thing to do. Yeah, we've had a number of shirts that we've gotten. We've got, uh, uh, teachers aren't paid enough. Uh, thank you, frontline workers. Uh, uh, doctor, in Dr. Fauci, we trust. So uh, it's been a fun way to kind of. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to say, your shirts are probably more noble than mine. My shirts have been, let's make this about me. Uh, check out my show, 11 TBS. Um, and I'd like to see more evidence that this uh, COVID really exists. I, I saw your one shirt that says, if I'm gonna die, at least let me be drunk. Conan, <laughs> uh, come on, man. You don't need to go to the bars all the looks, time. Will, yeah. those are the shirts I owned before COVID and I oh, have so to- That was pre? Those are pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I had a shirt that said, hey man, masks aren't my thing. I've had that for years. I remember you wearing that at uh, back at NBC. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, anti-mask way back then. So yeah. um, you're a good man. I think we've been interviewing, uh, I've been interviewing you for I think it's 65 years now, right? We started in the old Ed Sullivan Theater, and... Uh, no, I was never in the Ed Sullivan. You're thinking of David Letterman. Some, some great, great moments. Stupid pet tricks, all of it. So great. Again, that was, that was David Letterman. You're confusing me. I've... Wonderful times. I, I thought we were close. I've interviewed you hundreds of times. Your Canadian band leader. No, uh, that's Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. No. Schaefer. Yeah. That's, no, not so. Not, so not let me thank you. <laughs> You're thanking. Oh, wait, were you thanking me or no? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I, I wasn't even thanking you. I was irritated. Am I, am I you, getting an award? <laughs> You're not getting an award. Okay. You're terrible. I think you're a terrible person now. I'm a terrible listener. 
<laughs> hey, Will, it is just uh, always a joy to talk to you. You're one of my uh, favorite people of all time. I said one of. Yeah, I know, I know. Little wiggle room. I know. You know. I'm not me gonna, nope, I know. Pivot. Uh, you're one of my favorite people. I want to make sure I get the word out. Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga is available now on Netflix and look for Will's spoken word album that will be about 18 hours long, I believe, coming out sometime in the future. It's going to be great. No. It's be great. Awful. Uh, Conan, thanks, pal. Stay safe. And uh, we'll jam at Fargo one of these days. Uh, you didn't mean that, and you'll forget who I am shortly after you sign off. <laughs> Seriously, on a, <laughs> on a, <laughs> I need no, a cement mixer. <laughs> what? How? What? What's the confusion? <laughs> cement mixer. You know what? I don't usually. It's hard to build a bridge. I'm just going to do that. I don't ever, know. What you're doing. <laughs> I'm usually doing single family homes, but we we got hired by the city to build a bridge, <laughs> and. Uh, I don't think you're qualified to be taking Ooh. on this project. Oh, trust me, I know it, but don't tell the city that. <laughs> uh, hey, Will, seriously, uh, that was great. But it's nice to see you. Uh, you look good. You look good. Yeah, thanks. And yeah. I look good, too. Mm -hmm. You look like the way you always do. OK. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so nice, <laughs> Will. All right, take it easy, Will. Right. Thank you. Bye.